going to fill y'all. Please continue to remember him. He fell and broke his hip, uh, had surgery. Uh, so please pray for him and his recovery. And all of our Sunday school classes, uh, I want to uh, encourage you. Uh, we, we should this week uh, be getting all of our new chairs in for our Sunday school classes uh, here in this building to replace the ones we had to put in the choir. So I'll uh, be doing that on Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, we'll need some help moving those. So uh, if you'd like to help, please let me know. And uh, we just want to thank God for his goodness because God is good. Amen. Let's do something this morning. Let's worship him. Amen. I mean, I, sometimes in life we feel down. Sometimes in life we're battled and sometimes we're beaten. Sometimes it seems like Satan is just beating us to death. But guess what? My God's still good. God's still on the throne. He's still got this. Amen. Let's worship him this morning. How many of you believe this morning that you can trust God for everything? Would you say amen? Amen. amen. Let's worship him together with the choir.
I hope that's how you're going, because that's the only way you can go, amen, is through the precious blood of our darling Savior, and I appreciate Him uh, this morning, and I hope you do. I appreciate the blood He shed on Calvary and the victory that He won over death, hell, and the grave. He's alive this morning, amen. And uh, I got good news. Praise God. He's a coming back. Amen. You say, when's he coming? I don't know, but he's a coming. Amen. He may come before we get out of here today. That'd be all right, wouldn't it? Amen. We'll just go home and be at the Lord. I appreciate you so much. Thank you uh, for your presence here this morning. Uh, the choir's getting ready to come down. I'm going to ask you to stand. Children's Church will meet you in the uh, vestibule back there, ages 2 to 6. Hey, but you fellowship one with another. Tell them it's good to see them in God's house. Hey, I'll tell you, it's better in the hospital, amen, any day, amen. Hey, I appreciate the goodness of the Lord. Uh, you stand. The choir's getting ready to come down, fellowship one with another. Amen. God bless you. Amen. At this time, y'all may be seated. We'll have uh, Miss Brooke to come sing for us. Y'all sing for y'all. Pray for Miss Brooke as she comes to sing this morning. Amen. Tree or righteous throne. 
I'm glad because of Him, we will never walk alone. Amen? Uh, how many of you are glad today that the Word of God says, uh, where the Lord reminds us many times through the Word, I will never leave you or forsake you. Amen? How many of you are glad he's, he's always there? Would you say amen? Praise the Lord. God is so good this morning, and we want to give God thanksgiving for the opportunity to be back into His house. And uh, thank Him for being so good to us. I need you to do me a one a, a favor real fast. I want you to look at the person beside of you and tell them the other person beside you smells bad. Because there's something wrong in here this morning. Amen? All right. Now look at the other person and say, how are you today? Amen? All right. <clears throat> it is good this morning to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? I want you to do me a favor. If it's at all physically possible, I want you to take both your hands, stick them out like this, stick them up in the air, and say, praise the Lord. Amen. All right. That'll help you out a little bit this morning. And uh, we just want to thank God for His goodness. I don't know about you. I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. I'm glad to know that, to know that, to know that, you know, uh, that you can trust in the Lord and what God has done in your life. Uh, I, I know as a 17-year-old high school student, senior in high school, I, I know that Jesus came by my way about two weeks into my high school year and saved me one Sunday morning. Amen? I know uh, that without a doubt, I know what happened that day. I know how my life changed that day. And, friend, if you don't have that assurance this morning, guess what? You can. Amen? Just as much as you know where you are right this second, just as much as you know who you are at this very time, you can know that you know that you know that you know that you know Jesus. Amen? As a uh, boy growing up, I remember I uh, had a pastor who, who used to say this over and over. He said, you need to know that you know that you know that you know that you know you know that you're saved. There may be things you do not have a clue about tomorrow or this afternoon. There may be things in your life that you have worked toward and done all these things. You have no idea how it's really going to turn out. But I want to tell you what you need to know, and you better know, how going through this life, that you have Jesus in your life. Amen? Not just because that you will go to hell one day if you don't have Him, but I want to tell you what, He will change your life forever. Amen? How many of you know He'll change your life? I want you to take your Bibles this morning. We're going to turn to Matthew chapter number 7 this morning as we ask God to speak to us and ask Him to work in our life. So uh, now that you know your neighbor, you just said, you just talked about your neighbor, then you grinned at your neighbor, I want us to pray for our neighbor, amen? Uh, as God speaks our heart this morning, and just God will just work in our life, I am so glad to know that God, has, there's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? Our world may fail. People will fail you. Friends will fail you. Family may fail you. You may fail you. But Jesus will never fail. Amen? And He has given us His promises all through the Word of God, how we can follow Him and trust in Him. And I want to give Him praise this morning, give God honor and glory for the Word of God. Let's pray together. Father, thank You this morning for Your Word. God, we realize Your Word is given to us. You said, as a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God, I thank You for the Word of God. Lord, I praise You for the power that's in the Word of God. Lord, your, your Word is able to remove doubt out of our lives. God, it's able to comfort us in fear. God, it's able to bring us to a place of cleansing God from sin. Lord, I thank You that Your Word, God, has power in it this morning. God, to drive back anything that Satan would try to cause us and keep us from hearing what You want to say to us this morning. God, I thank You that Your Word is greater than our sin. Your Word is greater than our selfishness. God, Your Word is greater than our faults and failures. Thank You for preserving the Word of God this morning, so we can have your word that would transform who we are. God, to change us and fill us and anoint us and renew us. And God, you know every single need that's in this building. And God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you would move upon our hearts, God, in such a way that we would understand and know without a doubt who you are and that you are the one speaking to us this morning. Father, I thank you that your word is true. God, it does not uh, go around uh, any, any area in our life that we fear. But, God, you come directly to us and speak to us. And Lord, I praise you this morning that you have power in our lives through the Word. God, you said faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And I pray for those this morning in this building, in this place that does not have 
true, genuine faith that the Word of God will give them faith. Lord, I praise You for who You are. I praise You for Your promises, and I praise You for Your Word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you glad this morning for the Word of God? Amen. I want to look at this morning. We're going to continue thinking about and looking at the reality of hell. The Bible says this about the book uh, in the book of Proverbs. I love this verse of Scripture because of the explanation that it gives of why people continue where they are. The Bible says hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of men are what? Never satisfied. It's like sin continues to grow greater. If you would have told me uh, just a few years ago uh, that whenever you turn on the TV, you would see the scenes that you see now or hear what you hear on TV, I would have said there is absolutely no way. Would y'all have? But it is becoming more ungodly. When I think of, of the things that we have going on in our world, I think of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah was this. They lived the life they had with no conscience, with no morals, and they continued against anything that God put before them. And so we are living in that type of world today. But thank God for hope in Jesus. Amen? When you think about hell and destruction, wow, when I think about eternity, this morning, no matter who we are, no matter where we've been, no matter what we look like or don't look like, no matter our desires, no matter the, the failures we've had in life, we are all going to spend eternity somewhere. We are going to heaven or we are going to an awful place called hell. When I think about this verse of Scripture, these that I'm about to read, I want to just ask this question, who is going to hell? If there's an awful place called hell, who's going to be there? We understand when you read in the Word of God that how the Bible tells us who hell was created for. How the Bible tells us that at the beginning as he talks about hell being a place where Satan himself, where the devil is going to be and all those demons, all those who followed him. As much as we think about angels and God, uh, God giving us angels and the angels are real, I want to remind you that demons are also real. And so the Bible says and lets us know there's a thread all through the Word uh, that teaches us that hell was prepared as a place of change or a prison uh, for the demons and the devil himself. So if people choose to die lost and go to hell, they are intruders in hell. And they are in hell because there is nowhere else for them to go. You think about who is going to hell. I want us this morning to just kind of dismiss from our minds anyone else but me. I want us to just think about where we are this morning personally in our lives. I want you to know this morning that when you come to the house of God, we have a word from God. And this morning, this word comes out of Matthew chapter number 7. And these three verses of Scripture that branches off and goes all over of the word to remind us about what is going to happen to every life. The reality of hell brings us to the reality of God. When you begin to research and you look at man's mentality, the thoughts that people have today, we are trying to do every single thing that we can to dismiss that we might die lost and go to hell. To dismiss that there will be a place called hell. To uh, dismiss that one day, yes, I may have to stand before someone who is God, the eternal judge, the supreme, uh, the supreme one, the very God Almighty myself, that I would have to stand before Him. We must realize that there is some kind of hereafter. Most people you read after, most philosophers, some, most that have may not even know anything about the Bible or say anything about the Bible, they know that there is something else after you leave this world. 
And so why not be clear as we find from the Word what God said about where we could go. Almost every religious teacher or organization teaches some kind of hereafter that is going to happen. There are thoughts that we just vanish away. There are thoughts how that we just go to the grave and that is it. But we hear from the Bible from so many different sources in the Bible about what is taking place after the grave. After that place that our body gives up. The theory of evolution has created a doubtfulness of the existence of very God. Yet they still know that you've got to go somewhere. There is the thought that you can die and you are, and you come back as something else. I want to be really honest with you. That's scary. How many of you would love to come back in your afterlife as a cow? Or a fly? Or a frog? Think about some of those things. But let's go in our heart. Just dismiss all that. Let's say, that's right, or this is right. Let's just listen to what God says. Just a few minutes. Let's just say, God, even if, if it's everything else is right and this is wrong, I just want to hear it. I don't want you to speak to me about it. The Bible difference from all opinions to bring us to a reality that we are going to spend eternity somewhere. How many people in this building, or some of our, our younger kids have gone out to, uh, go, gone over to children's church, but how many in this building are 10 years old and younger? Raise your hand. 10 years old and younger. You are under 10 years old, 10 years or younger. All right. How many in this building are 20 years, 10, over 10, to 20 years old, up to 20 years old? Teenage, that's all the teenage years, all that. So raise your hand real high. Well, I'm not calling you out or taking another offering. Just raise your hand. Okay, how many of you are 20 to 30 years old? Would you raise your hand? All right, I'm keeping my hand up on the altar. Praise the Lord. How many of you are, are 30 to 40 years old? Raise your hand. All right, some of y'all lying. No, I'm just kidding. How many of 50 to 60 years old? Oh, okay, over 60. You're just over 60. Some of y'all just raising elbows. That's I understand. Praise the Lord. I miss 40. 40 to 50. Now I know some of y'all lying. Amen. It's dark here and I can see. Death does not care. No matter how old you are. into life. We've not come for that punch card that says, oh yeah, by the way, you have so many days, so many minutes, so many seconds, and it's going to be over. We have that. We just don't know what it is. The Bible says this in the book of Psalms, teach us the number of our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And so what God is doing through His Word is giving us some wisdom to say, look, your days are numbered, so here is some wisdom that you need, and you something you need to understand. Who is going to hell? When I ask that question, your mind may go to someone that you know right this very second that is walking a life and living a life that is the worst, most ungodly life you have ever seen, and you're saying, surely, yes, that person will go to hell. It may be somebody in your life that you understand and how you, you have watched them. They say, there's no way that person would ever be going to hell. I've watched and hear and you see it on the news. You see all these things taking place where people go in and just slaughter people. And you wonder, could that person, that person surely, they're going to hell. We may even look at people and think, you deserve to go to hell. Now look at the scripture. It 
reminds me of why Jesus kept saying, he must be born again. Why he kept saying, you've got to have that personal relationship with me that if you'll call upon me, I will save you. Because there is a reality of hell. There's the reality that people need Jesus in their life. I want to tell you, you just take out everything else and let's listen to what God says this morning. There is no other escape from a place called hell other than knowing Jesus to save you. I want you to I want you to think about something for just a second. I want you just to kindly, if you've got church membership in your pocket, I just want you to kind of take it out and put it on the pew beside of you. If you don't, you sure have some church membership, raise it up. I want you to just take out tithing. Leave that on leave that on the bench if you would. Take it out. Take out being a Sunday school teacher. Let's just take all these badges off. Let's wave it down. Being a preacher, let's just take all that off. Being in the choir, being any kind of, you, uh, we have some great organizations in our community that help help people take all that off and just kind of pile it up on the few beside us. And let's look and see who we are. Because what's going to happen at a time of judgment is that we are not going to carry those things in with us as our badges to get into heaven and to miss hell. And so, uh, when you come to Matthew chapter number 7 and verse number 21, it's the place where Jesus brings us to a reality that we are going to face an eternity. And the choice at that point has already been made. And so, I want you to look at verse number 21 with me, if you will. Verse number 21. The Bible says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. Listen to verse number 23. And when you look at verse number 23, think about yourself hearing this from God. He says in verse 23, Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. He who knew you. He should depart from me, you that work in the world. Wow. Now think about the reality of sin. Everybody. Every person you see, every every family member we have, every friend we have, every person around us, everybody should go to hell. There's something that's got to make a difference. Jesus looks at these and says, I want you to know, I never knew you. May I know I knew your grandpa. He might have knew your aunt, your uncle. He may have knew in John chapter number uh, number four where the woman at the well comes and she says, oh, yes, our fathers, they worshiped in the mountains. And she begins to tell them this big old, uh, be, begins to tell Jesus this big story of how religious they are because of her. But I want to tell you, he said, you, person, this morning when you think about heaven and hell, First of all, he says in these in this verse of scripture, he said, "Not everyone." He said, "Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven." Not everyone that comes up and ready to go and feels like, "Yes, I'm going to be in heaven." Not everyone will be in heaven. I'm going to be I'm going to be raw, rawly honest this morning. That'd be all right. They've lived ungodly. And they've lived a life that is totally apart from what God said in His Word that our life should be like. See, we don't line our life up by the church or by another Christian. We do it by what God says. You hear Him say, oh, I'll be glad. I can't wait to get to heaven and see. I'm thinking there's nothing in their life whatsoever that 
can't they get to heaven? You watch in life. And so he said, not every one. We understand something that Jesus is speaking about all mankind. When you go back all the way to Adam and Eve in the garden, God had blessed them. God had given them life. And they walked us into sin. He said, now because sin, as, as Adam failed in the garden, as Adam chose to disobey God, he said that now all men that, that passed upon all of us, that all have sinned and for the glory of God. Because of sin, we have death. Because of sin, we have a physical death. We have a spiritual death. We are, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians, that we are walking dead people before we know Jesus our Savior. We are dead in our trespasses and sin. And so because of that sin, here's what the Bible says in Hebrews 9 and verse number 27, and as it is appointed, I want you to do me a favor right now. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, you have an appointment. Here's what he said. He said, as it is appointed of a man once to die. Friend, I want to tell you, every person in this building, we're going to die. We are going to quit existing on this earth. Our heart is going to beat one last time. And he says it like this. He said, as the appointed unto man wants to die, but after this, the judgment. When he says that judgment, that does not mean that it is just judgment in hell, but he's talking about us standing before God with all of our life, with everything we have, standing in the presence of God and unable to offer anything except for ourselves. So life leads to an appointment with God. I think about all mankind, that's everybody. Friend, it does not matter if you believe or don't believe. Here's what the Word says. We're going to stand before God one day. And I want to let you know something. You can dismiss every single thing that you have this morning and just hear what God said. God said you're going to stand before me one day and give an account of your life. Here's what we understand about every, of all mankind, that everybody is invited. He said, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven and let us know something. There has been an invitation that has been given to every single man. All have been invited to enter in. Here's what he says. He, God gives us a beautiful picture. As Jesus talks about a supper, he said, this man makes a supper. He said, at that supper, he bids all these come in. He sends out all these invitations and said, I want you to know, I'm going to have a supper. Y'all need to come. All these excuses came in. Here's what Jesus said. He said, I want you to go out and invite everybody. Go to the highways and, highways and hedges. Compel them to come in. Have my house may be full. It is that place of inviting us. Here's what he said in Romans chapter 1 and verse number 20. He said, I want you to know that God himself has revealed himself through the word. He's revealed himself through creation in so much that every single person is without an excuse. All mankind, all are invited. This may be this morning your very first invitation from the Holy Spirit. It may be the first time that you realize that you don't know Christ as Savior and Lord of your life. And he said, look, I want you to know you are without excuse. And then he says in verse number 21 again, he said, all who say this, all, every single person that is going to be there are going to do this. He said, but he that doeth the will of my Father, all who does the will of God, I want to tell you this morning, salvation is not work. If you're trying to be good enough and clean your life up enough to ask Jesus in your life, it is not going to happen. You're going to be a clean person that is lost to help you. That place where he says, all who does the will of my Father. It comes back to a verse of Scripture that is in verse number 20 where he said, By their fruits you shall know them. God said, how is their life being lived this morning that all of us have taken our mask off? We've taken everything out of our life and we're sitting before God and we're standing before God. And I'm saying to myself, hey, do I know him? Can I go in my life and find the place that God's nature is in me? 
that I have been changed, that I have been transformed. Here's what he says in the book of 2 Corinthians 5, verse number 21, uh, verse number 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He's a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. I want to tell you how I know that I know that I know that I know that I got saved. God changed me on the inside. My granny changed me on the outside. She cut my hair, amen? I don't tell you, it's just a change on the inside. You can be church. You can sing in a group. You can be in the youth group. You can sell tickets. You can go. You can do every single act unless you know Jesus. And the reality is you will go to hell. He said, it's those that are doing the will of my Father. So let's take a check this morning in our lives. Am I doing the will of the Father? Is God so in me that I have a life that lives out who Jesus really is? Has He changed my life? The sin makes you sick. In your life, did you say that you have trusted Christ? Is, it, is your life so changed how that you have a desire to do the will of God? And God be alive to your life. You just say that I will. Not everyone that says in the name of the Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my heavenly Father. What is the will of God? Number one, the will of God is to trust Christ to save your Lord. All who trust him will enter in. What is his will? His will is, yes, God, I'm yours. I want you to lead me and guide me. I want to be on your team. I want to do what you would have me to do. Listen in life. How is your life? What does it look like when you are standing before God? When you are standing there, can you stand before God in your life and say, I know that Jesus saved me one day. I know that He has changed my life. And today, He is living in me. And I am doing the will of God. I don't really know what all the will of God is. It is reading the Word. It is following Jesus. It is hearing His voice. It is, it is in that place of prayer. It is just being a witness to others. It is discipling someone, leading them out of their Jesus. Those, are, those simple things that God said is that it's marks of a believer and marks in your life that, yes, I know Jesus. Do you have them? He said, not everyone. That means not everybody. Matter of fact, He says it like this. Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are Many are called. God gives the invitation out. He does not, not as well that any prepares for all the Where are you? Second thing is in the following verse, number 22, and he begins to talk about the name. He said, not ever has that name from any of you. No Jesus. When I look at this verse of Scripture, I think about what is going to happen in verse number 22 where he said, many were saying in that day. Lord, Lord, have we not done all these things? Lord, we are uh, we're in your name. We get them in your name. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, oh, Jesus, I know that you're going to let me in because I, I watched you go down the street uh, of Jerusalem and I, I was there when you healed them and I even raised my hands and said thank you uh, for what you did in my, in my friend's life that was their maim and uh, you picked them up uh, the one that was lame and I watched them walk and uh, Jesus I see all those things and wow in your name I just lifted up my hand he said many the same I just, I'm going to drop just a little something in you right here God did not make salvation hard. He did not make it complicated. He said there's going to be many that's going to stand that day, but yes, but Lord, we did all these things. We, we, Jesus, we, we went to all, I mean, look, I even went to church on a Sunday morning when it was raining. Jesus, I want you to look at, I went to Sunday school. Jesus, I know you're going to let me in because I have a Bible. I have a Bible app on my phone. I have shared a scripture before. In social media, I know you're going to let me in. He said, many will say in that day. Many. Jesus takes us back to verse number 21. 
you can put evidence in your life. When you get saved, there's evidence that you know Jesus. Not just going to church. It's real. I'm gonna, I want to be, I told you it's going to be real raw. I want to say something. It's real easy to learn how to go to church. It's real easy to go through the motions at church. It's easy to learn the language at church. It's easy to be able to just say, well, you know, man, if you're saved, I, I know I'm saved. I'm going to tell you, friend, it's got to be a personal relationship. He said, many are saved in my name. Then he said, there's many that's going to be doing works in your name. But they're going to say, Lord, we've cast out devils in your name. Lord, we've seen many wonderful works in your name. I'm just going to pull one man out of the Bible who walked that way, and that man. Man, you look at you look at the at the disciples coming down the road. Man, you look at Judas. Judas looks like he was the man. You would have never picked Judas out of the twelve and said this is the guy who's going to be this way. Matter of fact, when you look at Judas, you thought this is the most concerned guy in the whole world. He questions every single thing that God is doing. He, he asks all these questions and he is trying to keep things in order while Jesus and how these other eleven are, are totally out there. Judas keeps asking the right questions. My Lord, I know it's great that she anointed your, uh, your feet with oil, but we could use that money to have done something for the poor. Here's Judas' deal. Are y'all ready? He never got Spiritual thing. He only got the palm. He only got those things that he could see that were present. He never got what God was doing on the underneath. He never got a spiritual, a spiritual appetite. He never got in that place of yes, I know, and I know Jesus. He just knew who Jesus was and how to carry out his life like he was following Jesus. Also, you think about. I love, I'm going to be honest, I love small communities. Well, I call this small communities, yeah. I love how people work together. All that, don't y'all? I mean, I, I mean, I know some of the great people that would give you anything in their life. They're going to be in verse number 22. They're going to say, Lord, we've done all these things. And he's going to bring them to verse number 23. And in verse number 23, there's a word that he uses that is absolutely, you begin to study this word out, it means never. It means no, I have never, ever, ever known you. It is a word that says you are totally absent from anything that connects to me. He said, I, I'm going to say in that day, sorry, I have never, ever, never known you. Just think about it what God has said. He is our creator. He's the one who has given us life. But when we do not trust Christ as Savior and Lord, we do not have that connection with God. It only comes when we have a faith in Christ and knowing Him as Savior and Lord of our life. Not just because we were born. Not just because He's our creator. Not just because He has blessed us or done great things in our life. There has got to be a place in our life that we trust in Jesus as our Savior. When I was about six years old, the Vietnam War was kind of coming to an end, and I went to an I, I went to the altar. I, I'm really I know I probably can't remember what happened yesterday, but I remember going to that altar six years old. That was something I hung on to the rest of my life. I asked my mom later. I didn't really want to ask her about it. The reason I didn't because I didn't really want to know the truth about it. Amen. That's why I said this morning. Let's just ask Jesus. Let's let Him speak to us this morning. I said, what in the world? I she said, you just said you'd come in here and pray for, pray for the people of the war. I held on to that six-year-old thing of that. I'm good. I hid behind that. Because that was a place that I accepted the Lord. Never. He never knew me. He knew I was created. He knew who I was, but he never knew me. He knew he would give me life. I never give him my life. Never knew him. He said, in that day, I'm going to profess 
there's a profession that comes. And when I think about it in verse number 23, the profession that Jesus gives, that, that word is a covenant word. It means that he is making a covenant. And when you think about this covenant, this word, uh, profession, it says uh, we go in the same way in the Old Testament where God said, I'm making a covenant uh, with Abraham. Uh, that covenant is to save them, to bring them up, uh, to show them who uh, that I am, to lead to Christ coming uh, and dying on the cross. When Jesus came, the Bible says in Hebrews, uh, this is the New Covenant, the New Testament. This is God saying, I've written it down uh, that you need to trust Christ, and He is your only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And so that profession is a covenant. I am making a covenant with you and I will keep my word. And so in this covenant, Jesus says, you are the one I created. You are the one I give life. You are the one I give opportunity. And my covenant with you is I never knew you. And I never will know you. Think about that covenant. The same covenant that God says will bring you life. It's the same covenant that the end of life, when we have not trusted Christ, it ends our life in an awful place. The Lord is a person of God. Not somebody saying, I don't think you're going to make it. But standing before you, I never knew you. Never. I don't even have a thought because I never knew you. This is what he said in the book of John, chapter number 10. He said it this way. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them and they know me. Those are those who have trusted Christ. And he said they never knew me. When he says these words in verse number 23, he said, depart from me. That word depart is the same way it means pass away. It is to be gone completely. It is the thought of there's nowhere else for you. Think about hell. When I think about hell, I think about the tragedy of somebody that knows about Jesus. They've heard about Jesus. They may even sit on a church pew with Jesus, but they've never trusted Jesus. I think about the tragedy of hell. When I think about people who in their lives they've had so many opportunities, so many friends, maybe have come to Christ and shared Jesus with them, and yet they have never trusted him. So here's what Jesus said. That word depart means to, it's the same word, same way and the same thought of there's nowhere else for you to go but to hell. Heaven has no sin. Sin cannot enter in. And I want to tell you this morning, if you do not know Christ as your Savior Lord, you are living in sin. And I want to tell you that you trust Jesus who forgives you of your sin. Amen. So if you are kept out, you are clean. Place of him dying on the cross for us. Won't you do me a favor? I know in your Bible going to hold one scripture and say, and that is in the book of Revelation, chapter number 10. We've talked about over these last couple of weeks about the awfulness of hell, that there's suffering in hell, there's darkness in hell, there's remembrance in hell, then there's flames in hell. The Bible says in Luke chapter number 16, that in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, there's feelings in hell. Revelation chapter number 10, we're going to look at three verses of Scripture. That's the way I'm going to talk to you. The Bible says this in the book of Hebrews while you're turning. Hebrews chapter number 10, verse number 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Jesus died on the cross for me and for you took our place in hell. The Bible said he was buried. They put his body in a tomb. And on the third day he arose. And he said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. That means saved from your sin, saved from the punishment of sin, saved from the judgment of hell, saved from the tribulation, saved from every single sin that you have ever committed. He said, I want to let you know something. I will save you completely. Hallelujah. I want you to look at Revelation chapter number 20. Verse number 13, the Bible says, And the sea, let's back up to verse number 12. And I saw the, the dead, small and great. What are they going to do? Three words. Stand before.
before God. Stand before God. He said, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the book, according to their what? Works. I want to let you know something. Those works he's speaking of is how we conducted our lives. You think about that. When no works will ever get you into heaven, it is Jesus and Jesus alone. But I want to tell you, when you trust Him, there will be works in your life. He, he says, works of faith, He can reward us for them. What a day, isn't it? He says in the only verse number 13, And the sea gave up the dead that were in them, and death and hell delivered up. you got to remember, we just talked about hell kind of like the jail cell before you go to prison. It's a place where people go until the final judgment day. And that's what he's speaking on in verse number 13. He says, And death and hell, which were in them, the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their work. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. I just did this a second there. In verse number 15, he said, And whosoever... Whosoever has not found written in the book of life, cast into the lake of fire. Friend, I want to let you know something today. That book of life is the book he's talking about on eternal life. That when you trust Christ, he says, when you read about it, he says, your name's written in heaven. When you trust Jesus, the sins are gone. The Bible says in Luke chapter number 15, they celebrate it because your name is now written in heaven. But those who have never trusted Christ, those whose life has never been changed by the power of the gospel, he said, I'll let you know something. You are going to be cast into the lake of fire. I don't, I don't, there's no, there's no way in this, in this kind of study I can predict for you what hell will be like. But a few of this. Before I got saved, I would lay in my bed. I hope I don't die today. I'm going to go to hell. Listen, you can, you can try to wipe it away. You can try to say, it don't exist. Don't know what the Holy Spirit lets us know that we are going to stand before God. Just like we are. And there is a reality.
over what I was doing to please her. I said, how do you see this with your family? I never seen any spiritual reality in my life. And she goes, Chuck, she goes, I've never seen a child in my life this way. I'm going to tell you that I took her home after that. And she didn't want to go to hell. Thank you. Talk to you in hell. And according to these scriptures, guess what's going to happen? He said, there's going to be many in that day. Many in that day that's going to say, oh, Lord, Lord, yes, I did good. Yes, Lord, I did good. My daddy was a preacher. My dad, and I'll tell you what, you, you don't do anything I do, I'll take care of 